G'day, I'm Dan, and welcome to my build of Revels the Baron and his fun decker Fokker. This is a uh, reissue that came out, um, I think this year, 2017, and uh, the kit originally was issued in 1971. As you can see, there's not a lot of parts to it. It's uh, a very basic kit, so a lot of the work in this one is really just in how you decide to paint and decorate it. The decals that come with the kit are basic but, and uh, they're quite thick but they actually work really well and they weren't translucent which was my main concern when I first saw them. The uh, assembly instructions are pretty straightforward and as you can see written in a fun way. Uh, it's no surprise that this kit would have been aimed at younger modelers when it was first issued back in the day. The assembly sequence is very straightforward so it won't take very long even for an inexperienced modeler to figure out what to do. Most of the kits are moulded in this red plastic you can see I'm working on here and it's frankly terrible plastic. It's really light and brittle and scratches really easily so you'll find that uh, every step I did after I glued it together I had to use uh, a sander and then I had to use some kind of a polish to actually remove all the scratches that um, inevitably I got. Here's the wheels and uh, they're nicely detailed but it's a shame that the centre hubs are actually uh, and the spokes are actually part of the uh, the wheel itself so you have to do a bit of masking there to put the um, the silver on the on the spokes one nice feature as you can see here i'm putting together is the wheels are intended to be uh, free spinning once the kit's assembled Despite the plastic being really brittle, it did respond well to uh, both Rebel Contact Cement and some Tamiya Extra Thin. In the kit you get two engine choices. You get the rotary of course for the, uh, the Fokker, but you also get this really cool uh, Hemi as well. And you can choose to either just have the rotary or have both, which is what I decided to do of course, because the Baron needs as much horsepower as he can get. The Baron himself is actually quite nicely moulded and is in two parts so you will have a seam down the middle of his face you have to tackle. The chrome sprues mostly got parts for the engine as well as uh, the Baron's helmet and also a tail wheel for the aircraft. First up was the propeller. I painted that with a mix of desert yellow and flat white and uh, put that on top of a Vallejo grey primer. Um, I was going to try a technique here using oil paints out of the top of this which I had read about on Wingnut Wings website which sounded pretty interesting so I thought I'd give it a go. I decided the cowling had a bit too much chrome on it so I made up a mask here with some Tamiya tape and cut it out and then uh, primed the front of the cowling with some Vallejo red primer and then followed it up with a coat of Rick Doffin's red from Mr Paint. Okay, one of the things I didn't enjoy in the kit was having to work with this plastic. You can see here I'm having to scrap away some of the surplus plastic from our Baron and I then primed him with some Vallejo Surface Grey Primer and then when that had dried I went over the face with some Vallejo um, Skeleton Bone Primer Colour. For 
this project, I decided to give the Tamiya weathering powders a go for doing the flesh tones, which is something I hadn't tried before. And before I uh, started putting them on, I actually applied a little bit of violet and pink from Vallejo. Once I finished applying the Tamiya weathering powders, I sealed them all in using some Alclad lacquer. For his helmet I masked off uh, parts of it and then painted them separately so here I'm applying some Mr. Paint brass. I also uh, hand brushed on some AK metal uh, brass as well and some bits. And here's the final result. Uh, I used a little bit of AK true metal for his gold braid which that paint's just fantastic for brush painting if you want to get a metal finish. And uh, I also used a little bit of the Mission Models Clear uh, gloss for uh, his visor, which came up pretty well as well. I primed the wheels with uh, Vallejo Surface Primer in grey, and then went over it with uh, some Mr. Surfacer 1500, just to try and uh, see where some of the gaps might still be on the joints between the wheels and fill them in. When I was happy with the gap filling I then resprayed the wheels using Vallejo's surface primer in black and then put a coat of Alclade 2 Chrome over the centre of the wheels. The final colour for the tyres was uh, Mr Hobby's tyre black which I applied with a brush and used a little bit of AK Interactive's retarder just to slow down the paint drying a bit so you wouldn't see the brush strokes. Once that was dry I then sealed the chrome with some AK Interactive gauzy enhancer and uh, sprayed the outside edges of the tyres with some Alclad 2 matte coat. So for the propeller I used uh, a little bit of oil paint. I got this idea from Wingnuts Wings uh, who make the World War I uh, fighters and planes and what have you. And they suggested me using oil paint to simulate a wood texture. So I used uh, the Orca colour out of this set, which is the um, mapping technique, lights and shadows set. These are really nice oil paints. Uh, I'm no expert on oil paints, I'm learning as I go, but I've already noticed that they're a little bit um, easier to work with perhaps than some of the other cheaper brands you can buy uh, from your art store that I also happen to have. So I used that and I needed to put a gloss coat over the propeller blade when it was done so uh, as luck would have it, um, a local supplier here in Australia for Mission Model Paints has just become available so I ordered uh, in my quest to find the perfect gloss um, their Mission Models uh, Gloss Clear Coat which is this one here which is a water-based gloss coat and uh, this is their thinner and they recommend putting a few drops in with the Mission Models um, <coughs> clear coats. I've also got some of their paints too but uh, the colours I've got won't uh, really be suitable for this particular project but I thought I'd give them a go. I've just sprayed them and uh, let's have a look and see what it looks like. It might be still a little bit wet but still Hopefully the camera is picking that up. There is quite a nice gloss finish to that. So here's the propeller I gloss coated yesterday. It's not too bad, but I was looking at um, Mission Models website last night at their FAQ and I realised I didn't quite follow their instructions. So I thought today I'd give it another coat of gloss. Um, I'm going to uh, this time follow their instructions. So I'm going to put about um, about 10 drops of the, uh, of the gloss itself and only one drop of the thinner. I put a little bit more thinner in last time and Mission Models are pretty clear about the fact that their paints and even their clear coats are not supposed to have too much thinner in them so I'm going to uh, give it another go today. It takes apparently about half an hour to dry so that's fine so I should still be able to 
mask off the propeller and paint the ends uh, before the day's out. So I'll do that now. Assembling the engine turned out to, well, engines in my case, turned out to be pretty straightforward since most of it's just the chrome pieces. So it was just a matter of cutting them out and cleaning them up and putting them together. Later on I used a little bit of a black wash just to add some highlights to some of the parts. For the body it was a matter of just filling in all the gaps and sanding and then doing a little bit more sanding and oh, taking out the injector pin marks also on the wings as well and then polishing all the parts so that they would be ready for painting. Okay, so the time's come for the final colour and I'm going to be using MRP's um, Richtofen Red, which is MRP 250. This is a lacquer based paint and since we've already got a red primer we'll only have to put a fairly thin coat of this on to, uh, to get the coverage I think we'll need. At least that's, that's the hope. We'll give it a go now and see how it goes. So I've just masked off inside the, uh, the cockpit area there and I'm just going to put a little bit of black in here just to darken it down so that when our little figure sits on there, what bit you can see there will be, will be dark rather than red. I also use some Vallejo leather primer colour, uh, right just around the edges there to where the leather padding would have been around the cockpit. few last minute uh, details to the wheels. Time to put all the sub assemblies together. So next it was onto the decals and as you can see they're quite thick so it took quite a bit of work to get these to settle down. I uh, used a bit of Tamiya Mark Fit Strong to help me do it. When that was in place I then clear coated the entire model with Alclad 2 uh, light sheen because I felt that the ricked off and red was just a little too flat for this kind of model with all the chrome work on it. And uh, that's basically the kit finished. So it's now time to show you the final reveal. Overall, it was a pretty fun build, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and please like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next build.